welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry, and today I've got a very creative video for you. Have you ever wanted to jazz up a sweatshirt jacket or a sweatshirt or even a t-shirt? Maybe a jeans jacket or some other jacket that you would just like to bling it out or make it more personal to you uh, with your creativity and, and whatever materials you choose to add to it. Well, that's what I want to do with my Soya zipper front hoodie here. And that's that's what I have. There's a zipper going down through here. I bought this uh, jacket from one of their last sales that they had. Uh, usually when they have uh, sales like that on merchandise, uh, personal to them um, for marketing, uh, they don't repeat it. So it's going to be kind of a one-of-a-kind jacket in and of itself, but then if I add my own touch to it, it will even be more personal to me. So um, that's what I kind of wanted to do with this. It's just plain black. It does have the big Soya name on the front and on the back has their logo and their contact information, all their social media and things like that, website. So there's not a whole lot of room on the back uh, to do. There's room, but you know, the front is what you see first. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. So what I did is I went through my uh, orphan block box uh, the pieces and parts that I have of leftover quilt uh, pieces and of course all of us have uh, half square triangles left over from projects so those could definitely be added to the jacket here's another one that's actually in a, a black has some black in it that would coordinate um, also I have some little practice blocks that I did of a small tulip uh, those could be used somehow. I think probably if I did that, I would cut some of this white out of it and then just uh, applique the tulip itself down. That would be cute. I have two of those. I have some large uh, tulip blocks. It's actually the same as this, uh, just the top, and it's the large size. I had two extra left over from a project, so that could be added as is to the jacket right here on the front possibly. Uh, I have two of those. Um, have some CAFE facet strip sets from a block of the month that I did a long time ago. Those could be used on here. They could also be uh, subcut into strips like this and, and placed on here in an interesting way. Not sure. Here's something left over from a a baby quilt that I made. I like the lime green and the pink and the black there. Kind of coordinates really well with with this. That could be used somewhere. Here's some more cave strip sets. Some more. Here's another one. Here's a block. This is what I was talking about. You take those strip sets and cut them, offset them, sew them together, and then that would be a, a patchwork block you could use on your jacket. Here's a little strip set as well from a very old project that I did years and years ago. It was a um, French rose quilt. If you've ever seen that pattern, it's still available. Um, it was kind of a uh, ragged edge applique project. I actually took a class and that's how I came to have that. There's some more cave pieces. There's some more of the green and the black and the pink. And then there's this. I had a scrap challenge project last year that we did. And I used my crumb quilting fabric that I had made. And I made one with a light background and one with a black background to see what I liked the best for the quilt project I was doing at the time. And I used the white. So I have this practice block left, and I think it's just absolutely perfect for this. Now I could sit it this way. I could sit it this way. Or I could even kind of offset it, kind of kind of cockeyed. I kind of 
kind of like that. I kind of like the, 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 it looks like the block has just been thrown on there. I kind of like it like that. And how lucky for me that this is black because I am going to have to cut out some of this because of the pockets. I don't really want to close my pockets up, so I'm just going to cut that part out and it won't interfere with my pocket at all. I think that's what I'm going to do. And look, there's even some bee fabric in there. This is very representative of me because these are all fabrics that I have used in quilt projects. So I think this is just perfect. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to attach this because there's a zipper, right? How am I going to do that? So what I'm going to do is cut it. And I'm going to have this piece on this side and this piece on this side. And then I'll show you how to attach it. Okay, so I think I have this positioned exactly where I want it. I basically took it in the middle. This piece right here was in the middle and I just turned it. Now, yes, probably there's a little more of the star on one side than the other, but I kind of like that look. Now, this black is going to be cut away, so I won't be getting in the way of the Y there or the W. And then also on my pocket, I will be catching just a little bit of the top here because I think that's all the farther up I can go here. And then here as well, I'm just going to be into the top of this pocket, but your hands don't really go up in there. Um, so I think it's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I have some chalk here and I'm going to lay my ruler right where that zipper opening is. And I'm gonna mark it. And you can see that white mark there. That's where I'm going to split that block right down the middle. Also, I'm not going to cut anything else out of this center. I'm going to maintain all of that. But then I'm going to go around and cut. I think I should do a quarter. I'm just going to go ahead and do a quarter, leave it raw edge, and do a blanket stitch all the way around. If you have some other decorative stitches you want to use on your machine, uh, take that into consideration as to how much you want of this to show or to be, to be cut if you have a block like this. If you have just a square block that you're putting on above your pockets, it's not gonna matter. So for example, if you have the, let me see, I wanna find that tulip block. Here it is. Let's say you wanted to put your tulip block there and all you would have to do really is just cut this right where that seam is and then you won't have to worry about your pocket. You could just trim it down to the size that you need. And then you'd have half your tulip on one side and half on the other. Or any other square configuration that you have. Let's say you wanted to just take a, a strip set. Just place that nicely there above your pocket. Mark it, cut it. And when it's all zipped up, it's gonna look like one continuous block. So you could do that with any of your square quilt blocks above your pocket. If it fits here, all you have to do is just cut it right down the middle. So think about that when you're getting ready to choose your block or your patches that you wanna use. Um, you could also, um, let me see if I can find that other one again that I had, here it is. Let's say you wanted to do this one, but you wanted it to go this way. All you'd have to do is line up those corners on your zipper opening, mark it, cut it, pull it apart. You'll have one side for each side of the zipper. So that would certainly be cute. So look and see what you have and see what you possibly could use out of your orphan block stash. If you don't have one, make up a new block. There's all kinds of block patterns out there. Just make yourself up one in your favorite fabrics. Okay, so with my ruler and my alpha cutter, I cut that line, that chalk line that 
I had made. So now all I need to do is go through and measure a quarter of an inch on each one of these and have to be careful there and not uh, cut through my star design. Let me get up here where you can see me. I think I need a smaller ruler. Let me get a smaller one. Let's see, I did that one. And then we're gonna go a quarter inch along this one. And I have a little bit still attached there. I'm just gonna be very careful. Maybe I should get my scissors and just do that with my eyeball. There. So now all I have to do is all of my outer background okay so there are my two halves of my star and that's what's going to get applicated on the front of my jacket. So should I reinforce this, make it a, give it a little more body? Probably not, since this is so many seams. Should I put some sort of fusible on it so that it will stick to my sweatshirt as I'm sewing it on? Maybe. So there's three things at least three things you can use to apply this to apply to the back of your block to give it a little more body so that it'll lay nicely on your shirt so let me go over those with you so now how do we stick our block onto our jacket there's a few different ways you can do it um, I'm sure there's many opinions on what's the best way but I have several things that I keep on hand for this purpose, uh, namely uh, some Pellon products, uh, Pellon interfacing products. This one is called PF, P44F Fusible Interfacing. I, don't, I hope that's not upside down. It might be. So P44F Fusible Interfacing. It's a very light weight fusible fusible meaning that there's a little bit of glue on one side you can barely touch it there's also another Pellon product called SF 101 it's just in my opinion slightly thicker than this at least the dots of glue are more you can feel them a little more in my opinion so either one of those will do to strengthen your your embellishment that you're going to put that's made of fabric or you can use heat and bond light this is a an applique uh, tool that you use to be able to fuse glue onto the back of your embellishment in this case my star and then be able to fuse that down directly onto the jacket and what that will do for me is it will keep that thing from moving while I'm applicating it on and putting my stitches around the edges so more than likely that's what I'm going to use I do have to be careful because the jacket is a, a mix of polyester and cotton it is mostly cotton but it's it's almost it's like I think it's 60 40 or something like that so uh, I have to be careful with my iron on that uh, I would like to use this though uh, this doesn't add a whole lot of body to the quilt block or the the extra pieces of fabric that you're going to be putting on but it is a little more than than this so if you use this on the back of your block uh, put the glue side to the back and then you'll still have to pin your block down onto your jacket before you sew it because this won't hold it down like this will this is glue on both sides this is glue on one side so I will show you how I'm gonna do this 
and hopefully it turns out nice <laughs> it produces a nice result oh there is one other product i wanted to to run by you is there's something called wonder web that's also it's almost like a freestanding gluey webbing it's it's on a bolt like this and you put it between your two items and it glues both at the same time um it used to be called wonder under in the old days but i noticed on the website that it's called wonder web so that can be used as well anyway that's some options that you have don't be thinking that one's right over the other uh, some people have strong feelings about it but uh, I've used all of these in all of these different types of situations you can be in and they all work so whatever you have on hand if you have SF 101 P44F heat and bond light they're all gonna work so Try to use what you have if you can so let me go ahead and get my star now i could have went ahead and cut this out ahead of time into a square that was equivalent to what this block is before i even cut out all of this area i could have just left it a square and put this on it i could have done that probably would have been easier actually <laughs> but i didn't and I am a little bit stingy with this heat and bond stuff. It's not hugely expensive. It's three, I don't know, $3.79 a yard or something like that. Of course, Joann's has it half price a lot. So, um, I don't know. I just tend to be a little bit stingy with it. So, I might go ahead and, and cut some of this out and reuse some of these small pieces that I have here on the edges for my happy days project that you, has a lot of little pieces to it so i'm going to go ahead and get this going here on this heat and bond light so first thing i'm going to do is cut out over to here get this out of the way i'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit of this away save my little pieces if it's just not worth it to you to save these pieces then you can leave them they'll be eventually cut away but I'm just gonna go ahead cut them out and save them And that plastic needs to come out don't need that okay so let me get the iron fired up and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this okay so I have my wool mat I have my iron dry iron on a high temperature I have a piece of paper like this like butcher paper and then I have my heat and bond light with the rough side down to the back side of my star and it doesn't have to be you know like you know where I cut this down through here which I didn't have to do ahead of time it doesn't matter just as long as all of it gets some on it um, another reason I wanted to use the heat and bond is because of all of those seams on there I just want my block to lay nice and flat when I do my applique so that's kind of the purpose of it okay so what you do is you just press you don't iron you just press and you see it turns kind of wrinkly on you Do this in real time so you can see about how long it takes for the glue to get off of the paper and onto your your block or your star or whatever fabric you're ironing to you don't ever want to get this on your iron if you can keep from it Just making another quick 
pass over it not ironing but pressing just to make sure it all looks to be about the same texture okay so now we've applied glue to the back of my star but we have to get this paper off first so you just kind of go at it pull it off I, I wait a few seconds before I, I pull it off but you can see that the glue is there it's not on the paper anymore and if you start to pull up and you, you're seeing glue you can put it back down and try to get it to stick to your fabric just make sure your back of your block is looking shiny the glue is there no glue on this so it's on here where I want it looks like I did a decent job sometimes I get in a hurry and I leave glue on the paper which sometimes a little glue is enough and sometimes you just want every drop so there it is. Gonna throw those papers away and there we go. Do not use steam. Contrary to popular belief, you're not supposed to use steam on fusible products. Uh, some people do it, but a lot of times it will, there's like a point of no return. You could actually cause the pellon to actually come back up off. Of your fabric so be careful with the steam and also on a wool mat you should never use steam this is a natural fiber and when natural fibers get wet they get stinky and smelly and nasty looking so I only use my wool mat for when I'm piecing without steam or for something like this all right so now we've got I think I'll just go ahead and kind of peel this up off of my freezer paper here. It's not going to hurt anything. But I am going to want to trim off this extra glue. The freezer paper can go in the trash. Unless you want to use it for something else. For me, those are one-use applications. So now I can take my paper scissors or older scissors that I have. Here I can cut my block back in half again. And I will continue to trim these little pieces of glue off. Because I don't want to get those on my iron. Because the next step is going to be ironing this down to the sweatshirt. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, here's my final placement. I took a lint roller and got the lint all off of here. I stuck my board, my um, wool mat inside of here. Now if you're using your ironing board, you won't have to do that. You can just use your ironing board surface and just do one side at a time. Uh, I just didn't want the back in with the heat. Uh, there's a lot of this on the back and I didn't want that getting disturbed. So what I'm going to do now is, oh, I do, do want to say too that I did trim a little more off to make this square because of this, it's all geometry. It, because of this uh, separation here, it was kind of making my one side higher than the other. I, if, if this was even, then my star points weren't right and if my star points were right the the center was off so i just cut another about a quarter of an inch off of each 
inside piece of that and that just made it perfect and you can see I'm not interfering with any of these letters right here and this doesn't bother me this is already in the there's about a quarter inch that's over into the opening that won't matter this one nothing and then this is going down into the pocket but I'm not worried about that because your hands are going to be down here not up here usually so now I've got my gluey side down it's all trimmed up ready to go so I'm going to take a piece of a fabric and lay over the top of this so that I do not melt any of my fabric remember I said this has a little bit of polyester in it and I need I want to use a high heat to activate that glue through all these layers so I'm going to use a piece of muslin to go over the top of this before I iron it. Okay, there's my piece of muslin. I'm going to iron over and I'm just going to go over to the points. I can see them through the muslin. You can't see it in the camera. I'm just going to go through here and let that sit on there for a second. And make sure the heat gets all the way through. Okay, so that did very well. Everything is stuck down all the way to the points. Nothing's going to move out of place. Now, just a little bit of a review. This is kind of a lesson in how to use heat and bond. If you're using the, the P44F or the SF101, you have none of this to do. All you have to do is fuse that shape on the back of your block. And then you will pin down your applique and applique it down stitch it down however you're going to stitch it down and uh, it's not near as complicated but there is the risk of it sliding a little bit on you but if you pin it really good i think you'll be fine so if you want to go the super easy route use the fusibles uh, in that way if you want to be super careful and make sure your design stays exactly where you want it to go without a doubt use the heat and bond okay so i'm going to go to the sewing machine now and once this is cooled off a little bit and sew this down with some black thread okay so i'm at the sewing machine obviously i have changed my needle to a ballpoint needle only because of the knit fabric underneath uh, i'm using orafil 50 weight thread and black I have my applique foot on I gave my machine a good cleaning because it needed it anyway and I have the uh, baby lock jazz 2 and I am on stitch style number 16 and I have my stitch length at 3 and my stitch width at the normal setting between 3 and 4 and what I do just to so that I don't take off with a stitch I don't want first of all you can do something on a practice piece but I didn't have a practice piece of knit fabric so uh, I'm just kind of doing this maneuver right here and as normal you want this part whoops sorry let me see if I can point to it you want this part of your foot to be along the edge as you're sewing so that when you turn your corners and everything it's going to be uniform all the way around but then also uh, testing out that stitch length and width it's coming out right in the middle of this i could have made it longer and make it go more towards this side but i think that's okay where it's at i think i'm going to stick with that right down the middle of the road stitch there it goes over to the side back over and then some straight stitches I'm not even holding on to anything I'm using a button to do this with <laughs> so I have my phone in one hand and my other hand on the button so uh, I'm not guiding the fabric but when I let go I'll put both my hands down on my fabric and guide it through and go a little bit faster can't show you that because I don't have enough hands to get this close okay so I'll stop in just a minute 
and show you what a few uh, stitches, few inches of stitches will look like. Okay, so there you can see my blanket stitch. Now this is raw edge, really. I didn't turn over the edges. But I didn't use a straight stitch either. I de did decide to use a, um, I'm not sure what that is, but I could go back and trim this up a little bit more, but I probably won't. Uh, here you can see, because this is a crumb block, you're just going to see all kinds of strange thing, things along the edges. I think that might be just a teeny tiny bit of glue or something. So uh, I'm not too worried about any of those things. I think it's going to look great. So I have this side actually all finished. So I'm going to go to my other side now and I'll see you here at the end. Okay, I'm really liking this. I'm really liking it. And I kind of like the raw edge look, even though I did a um, blanket stitch, which is really going to hold it good for a long time. I still have a few little raggy edges. I kind of like that. Um, at first, I thought, no, I want it to look kind of neat, and that's why I used the black thread. But, you know, if you really, really want your your block to be super neat when you do applique the only thing you can do is turn, turn under the edges and that almost always calls for hand stitching I'm not doing any hand stitching <laughs> so here's the inside you can kind of see maybe where my stitches were here's the star I went into the pocket just a teeny tiny tad I won't even be able to tell that it is and the same thing on this side. There's just a little bit right here that's in the pocket, but my hand, it easily goes in inside and out. So you can go down into your pocket a little bit. Just be aware of the opening itself. You know, you stick your hand in, you don't use this area up here. So the fact that that star point is there doesn't interfere with anything. So what else can we do? To bling up our jacket should we leave it like that or should we do some more stuff let me show you some things i picked up and some things i searched for around the sewing room here that i could use to do some more stuff to it I'm not real sure what i want to do actually but i have a whole bunch of vintage buttons so i pulled out a bunch of those and i could certainly you know put some of those on there maybe in this area right here I don't know I don't know if I want to do that or not there's some wooden ones is that the way it goes or is it like that there's a little white one you could do something like that or do I like that button or you could I could I have these buttons that I got recently. Um, I was looking for something that was a little bit kind of diamondy looking. And these are actual buttons that you have to show, sew on. They're shank buttons, which means they have a little metal loop on the back. And all you'd have to do is stitch those on. So I think those would be cool. These are really pretty, but I think they're a little bit too too vintagey looking so I think I'm not gonna do those I have three packages of these and then I also have these studs so if you didn't want to do the blingy diamond looking thing you could do studs and I think you probably could do a combination these are the the kind that you stick in and then you can just fold over those little prongs and I was looking for rhinestones that do that, but evidently they don't make those anymore. I found them on Amazon, but in the craft stores you can't find them with the little prongs. So these would actually have to be sewn on by hand, which I don't mind sewing a button on. So I don't know if I want to put my little diamonds different places on my block. Or do I want to put it on Soya somewhere? I think I want them on my block. And another thing that I picked up was some faceted gems that 
are flat on the back and you have to use some sort of adhesive and I got this E6000 with precision tips that you could actually you know there's so many in there you could actually spell a word with them or something put your name on it or something like that um, I'm a little bit afraid of this simply because I think this will be a jacket that I use a lot and I think they probably would fall off which you know if they fall off you can always put them back on look how many I have there are, uh, I'm trying to see how many are in here. A whole bunch, <laughs> 6.88 ounces. I don't know how many that is exactly, but there's thousands of them in there, I think. So for now, at least I have these options if I wanna add something to it later. I think for now, I'm going to randomly place some of these little buttons in some of the intersections of some of the fabrics. And I have 12, so I could put six on each side or so. So let me do that, and then I will show you what that looks like. Here's the jacket zipped up again. Let me get this going for you. And that didn't interfere at all with the mechanics of the zipper. I sewed out well outside of the zipper. And I'm just really liking this. So let me put a little more bling on there and I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, so here it is. This is it. This is all I'm gonna put on my sweatshirt, at least for now. I can always add to it later. I did not use the little diamond shank buttons because they were just going to hang straight down with that shank. The shank was actually a little bigger of a loop than I thought it was. I thought I could sew them on nice and tight and keep them upright, but I could tell before I even started that was not going to be the case. So I did get the glue on jewels out and put those on. We'll just see how long they last. And I can always order from Amazon the stud type to replace them if they fall off. So <laughs> that's what I did. And then I also found a, a string of uh, plastic jewels that I added to my zipper tab. You can see that here a little bit better maybe when I put it down on this little square. So I added that little bit of bling on there as well. So I think I'll go put this on and model it for you. Okay, so I'm no fashion model, but uh, here I am in front of my she shed. I'm just wanting to give you an idea of what the jacket looks like overall. Uh, I ordered an extra large size, which is a little bit larger than I normally would wear. I probably would wear like a large shirt, but you know how it is with jackets. You want lots of room underneath of it. So you can kind of see there the star and then a little bit closer up there. Kind of can see the jewels that I added to it and the zipper pull. Here I'm gonna open it up so you can see it open. It's kind of cool, I think. So do something with your your sweatshirt jacket or jeans jacket or whatever you want to add some embellishments to.